Bunch. Kick. Hit. Scuffle. Them is fighting words. Um, I want to know if I'll ever get married. No. You haven't even looked at my palm. I don't have to. I've seen your face. I know for a fact that at least two men are madly in love with me, okay? So which one is going to be the lucky one? Robert will be the lucky one. Frank will marry you. Well... I did get my nephew this cute little puppy for Christmas, right? But uh, unfortunately it died, so now I'm just stuck with this dog. Go on, play it, Sham. Not that song, Sham, the other one. That's it. That was our song. I'll never forget the first time I laid eyes on her. Saw her profile silhouetted against the dim lights at the Boire de la Cour. At first I thought she was eating a banana, but it was just her nose. Her eyes were so beautiful, the left one couldn't stop staring at the right. Finally, one of them looked my way. She smiled that big, silly grin at me, and I realized why she was wearing a black and yellow dress. It matched her teeth. She flopped over to my table. I extended my hand to shake hers. Rick, I said. No, Ilsa, she replied. Elsa, that's a pretty name. What's that short for? Cassandra. She may have looked stupid and sounded stupid, but I wasn't fooled. She really was stupid. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, I think she'd been in most of them. We spent the next couple of years traveling together. Europe was our oyster and we were just a couple of pearls. We wound up in Paris, trying to see all the parasites. Then came that fateful day, the day of the invasion. The Germans wore gray and she wore blue. I wore a hole in a brand new pair of pants. That's when things went south. We called it quits before we'd even started. I don't know, maybe it's because we didn't see eye to eye on everything. Maybe it's because we both wanted something different out of this whole crazy affair. Or maybe it's because she caught me stealing $20 out of her purse. Maybe it was because I was honest about the way she looked in those pants. Maybe it's because she caught me wearing her underthings. Maybe it was because every time she told me she loved me, I punched her right in the mouth. Maybe it was the way I made fun of her deaf brother. Maybe it was because every time I passed wind, I blamed it on her, whether she was in the room or not. Maybe it was because I plain old fashioned murdered her pet goldfish right in front of her eyes. Whatever the reason, I like to think it was her fault. She said if I ever wanted to see her again, if I ever needed her, if I ever wanted her back in my life, all I had to do was whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you, Rick? Just put your lips together and blow. What's the difference between a woman and a computer? I can turn on a computer. <laughs> Thank you.
Take one, and action. There's Indians on the warpath! And they just hooping and a hollering and a... We don't say that anymore. Take two, action. There's Native Americans on the warpath! No, they... cut. We don't use that one either. Take three, action. Indigenous persons on the warpath. And they are displaying some of the more antagonistic aspects of their culture. Run for your lives. And cut. What do you call 32 pale face in one room? A full set of teeth. All of these constituents have a powerful effect on the body. In last week's episode, Susan's husband, Dr. Kierkegaard, had mysteriously disappeared with the secret formula, leaving Hermione to wonder if her marriage to Mr. and Mrs. Paddington and their husband, Mr. Sedgwick, was anything more than an attempt to make Taryn, who since the operation prefers to be known as Cassandra, jealous. And. Billy's obsession with learning the Norwegian beard flute has scared Mrs. Beasley into admitting to Mavis that Pancho really is the leader of the plot to assassinate Premier Ballast, and that when Ronald does finally learn to look into his past, Toby's weight loss journey will affect more than even Humphrey could know. And Mrs. Peddington's pussy, Tiddles, led police to the brains of the operation, the Smegnant brothers, in just the nick of time. And so, our story goes on, as the days go on and on and on and on. She was only a cat, but she had a face. Oh, look who it is, Harold. It's our Raymond. Oh, I. I shan't be long. I've just come to collect some of my things. And just what do you think you're doing? Drinking a glass of water, father. Drinking a glass of water? We never drank water in my day, I can tell you that, my son. Oh, what did you drink, father? We drank grit and hard graft and mud, both ways in a snowstorm. Mm, that must have been hard on your kidneys. I have none of your lip, thank you. Drinking water. If your poor old granddad could see you now. I can. Oh yeah, sorry Dad. Pay no attention to your father, Raymond. You drink as much water as you like. Yes, you do that, Raymond. You have a nice little drink here, and when you're done, perhaps you can tell us who it was that put a hot meal over your head all these years, eh? 
Who was it that put a roof in your mouth? That was Mung. You never worked a day in your life, father. That is entirely beside the point, my son. And just what do you think you're doing now? Breathing. Breathing? Leave the boy a level now. Well, I never breathed. You're doing it now, father. No, I'm not. Ah. Oh yes, very clever, isn't it? Very clever to point out the flaws in your opponent's argument. Trey Habil, Raymond, I think not. Your granddad would be spinning in his grave. I'm still alive. And what, pray tell, is that supposed to be? Literally standing, father. Standing? Right, that's it. I wish I had never been born. Ha! I was never born. And look where I am. In a chair. You know, you really are much too hard on him. Can I help it if I'm deranged? No, I suppose not. <coughs> Hello. Ah! Hello. What? No, dear, I, I can't tonight. I've got me sewing circle. <laughs> Well, it was Tuesday night and the girls came over. I was happy as a pig in clover. Betty Lou, she was gone in a sock. We all did the sewing circle rock. Come on, needle point around the clock. Round the clock, oh yeah, oh yeah. Now it's time to mend that frock in the sewing circle rock. Lucy did a buttonhole you wouldn't believe. Mildred on the loom, she was starting to weave. Gladys did a long stitch with fingers so nimble. She said, I don't need no poor man's thimble. Come on, needle point around the clock. Now's the time to mend that frock. In the sewing circle rock. Come on. in fabric up to the hilt Agnes in the corner she was starting to quilt Nellie took some pants in just like a dream she said I'm gonna use an invisible seam come on needle point around the clock now's the time to mend that frock in the song like a rock in the song like a rock in the song like a rock over to the judges now. 1.5, 3.4, 6 and 7 eighths for a grand total of 1 million billion kajillion shillion papillion gagillion dillion nillion shrillion willion fee five fulfillion quillion googillion trintillion sicilian chameleon I know what you're thinking, you're thinking that vid was pretty cretaceous. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, sub to the chan, sub to the chan, you don't even know, like what's Skitty even doing over here, what are you even doing? We party hard on this chan, bud, 24-7. Oh! Ugh.